Okay, we na sa mina san today we're gonna talk about Osama Sentai King Oja episode 30. After watching this episode, I have one single thought. How many episodes of Osama Sentai we are actually gonna have? Because based on how they are moving the story, I'm I'm not saying that it's bad. Is is just I I felt like they can slow down a bit you know like i i felt like for this furry of the god thing with karas dying in a single hit by kamejin all those those things are amazing but me personally would kind of like prefer a little bit of you know like kind of like a slow burn type of drama a little bit but then again this is a ranger series is this is not a, a drama okay so i have to accept the fact that this is how things are gonna go and this is the pace that we are going forward but with that being said i still felt like if they actually took the effort to really shine more on on Karas on the past of rita on uh, just a little bit of slow burn for for the furry of the gods and even the past of rita because in this episode we get to see a lot of things we get to see the 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 eye power of rita we also get to see the 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 man behind the furry of the gods and he turns out he is one of the galactic insect jester something like that and then at the end of the episode we also tease like the 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 mother of jeremy appear out of nowhere i was like bro there's so many things to to juggle here like what what are we supposed to focus on something like that but i i still felt like they they did their job they managed to cut the 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 episode into three diff uh two different parts i would say the first part is introducing what is to come and kind of like teasing us the idea by himeno asking the question to rita like hey what is your eye like why why do you hide your eye why your eyes has a different color something like that and rita kind of like did not answer him and all it's not that rita doesn't want to tell him and all but it is her duty as a supreme justice you know like karas told her not to tell anyone so she's not telling anyone something like that okay so that's really really amazing but another thing that i really enjoy is how like rita is so passionate like the way they, they are able to portray rita passionate heart with by talking about morphine scalper that is like so so good like she even like having difficulty talking because like she speaks so much about the the scalper like she actually cough and she needs to like get on her knee and drink the tea and continue with her diet so that is really really subarashi as well and we also get to see something really interesting because he may know for for a country that is so there's solely focus on beauty and also medical something like that you you i'm really really surprised to actually see that there has this special saying that that Rita learned from him you know, in this episode and that is Tesselas Mirulia Da Pago so it's supposed to mean like uh, I'm gonna go to hell with you you know if, if, if I before I die I'm gonna, gonna drag you down together with me something like that so that, that saying is like really really vulgar like no, i wouldn't say vulgar but very vengeful in a sense for a country of ishabana that is like full of beauty and all those stuff so that, that that's that that saying sounds very vengeful it kind of like sounds like sunachi from one one piece like the 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 the, the, the phrase of word that the samurai actually shouted spoiler for those who haven't reached wano yet i'll, I'll be waiting for you at wano but i i think I think this phrase is I don't know man like it, it just came out of nowhere it almost made me think like maybe at the in the beginning stage of of Ishabana like it is not supposed to be that this this beautiful country like this country actually came from a very very like french or european style of country where there's a lot a lot of civil war there's a lot of like kind of like a revolution something like that so you know like eventually they managed to come to peace and they managed to become the the country of Ish ishabana that they are something like that so i think that is kind of like true for a lot of country like even if you watch uh the story of japan if you read the history of japan they have in wars going on with one another until they managed to unite japan the unified the land of japan something like that so it, I'm, I'm not surprised to 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 actually see that before these five big nation actually came to be like there's a war going on like between human like even before the back right interferes like the humans are already fighting with one another so so is this this saying from from ishabana i i'm not really like surprised but i'm still surprised i 
I, I'm contradicting myself, okay? Like, let me just move on to the next thing. Another thing in this episode that I really love is the the relationship between Gira and Jeremy, like that we actually get to see. I felt like it, like we how phase one actually ended with Gira and Jeremy. Like they 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 both of them just became king. They are they are two new kings in the block. They are the new kid in the block. So obviously their relationship with one another is gonna grow really, really close with one another, mm. another because they are learning how to be kings and how to lead their country. And Gira is actively trying to to nurture the relationship between Bagnera and human together with Jeremy, obviously. So when we actually get to see Gira visiting Jeremy, like, hey, bro, are you okay? How are you? And Jeremy be like, hey, you know, like, it's been like this for the past 2000 years, but things are different now. I have you, you care for me, something like that. So I think I really, really love that uh friendship that we saw between Gira and Jeremy. It's like the, the man rider, the, 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 the red rider and the the white rider like having this a little bit of kind of like bro bromance i think that is really really amazing hopefully we get to see more of that in the future as well okay but i felt like the the character that don't really have any like chemistry so far is i i think is like yama and also Dibowski. we don't really get to see the both of them interacting with one another that much even though like there's a little bit of like back and forth in the early days of the series we actually get to see like how yama says Dibowski like because of how scummy he is or how scheming he is he actually makes Dibowski more trustworthy something like that okay so yeah, I don't know why, why, why I go there. Maybe I just wanna like, kind of like couple up, not not like couple up the the ranges. I just wanna like, there's like different dynamic dynamic when we see different ranges like together interacting with one another, and I, I think this is especially true in this episode when we get to see Himeno and Rita like they are connecting with one another and we even get to see a really really i would say really powerful scene at the end of this episode when we actually get to see rita like felt a little bit of warmth like she she's like imagining morpho like hugging her but turns out it is actually himeno himeno is the one that actually hugs rita and pull rita's away from using her secret art and and, and tell her that hey my this guy has already took away my parents don't don't let him talk away my friend as well again Again. so that i think that one is like wow impactful powerful hopefully we get to see more of those things because it is really really subarashi okay like i i really love that scene like how they ended the the episode with how rita like you know like she, she's determined to sacrifice herself to play her role as the supreme justice and if if she actually play her role as the supreme justice then monophonia is definitely gonna be the next supreme justice and monophonia is ready for that and that is why rita since the early days already kind of like hey monophonia you're gonna be next in line something like that because she's like preparing one day this is gonna happen something like that so that is really really amazing as well i really love how they settle that emotional impact thing in the episode itself but they they still didn't manage to figure out a way to kind of like defeat grody something like that okay so i'm i'm really really curious to see how they are gonna defeat grody and i mean like i i have my own theory on how they might actually defeat grody maybe one way they can actually choose to you know like defeat grody is by using poison again but because like because himeno's parents was being killed by the poison of scorpi you used by grody itself so maybe there's a way that himeno is able to harvest another sugar's poison to use against grody and the the sugar that i have in mind right now is gonna be tarantula abyss because throughout phase two of the story we have not seen tarantula abyss anyway and being a spider i would assume tarantula abyss is I gonna have the a, a poison in in his van as well so that is what i kind of like assume okay but then again i could be wrong so if if they manage to defeat grody just by by using poison i think that is gonna be very poetic there's it's gonna be really really amazing because 
that is how we first get to know him and that is how he actually end up dying so that's gonna be really really subarashi as well another thing that i maybe just talk about a, a few things that i felt like 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 i said early on in the video like i i, I prefer them to kind of like slow down a little bit chotomate kuda sai something like that to kind of like split up the episode into two episodes maybe and we actually get to we we if it, it, it would be glad if we actually get to see what happened from the perspective of Karas rather than like we have a flashback rather than seeing it from the perspective of Durajin uh, and how the, the perspective of Kamejin because when Kamejin kind of like tells Dur Durajin like hey this is what happened remember Grody like he's one of the jester I went to free him we, that is how we actually get to see what happened but I think what what would be much more impactful is we if we actually get to hear this from Karas itself, like like Karas did not die from the 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 laser beam of of Kamejin, and she she managed to escape, and she she wants to go back to warn the people something like that. So of of what is to come, I think if if that is how the story goes. It, they, they are able to have a little bit of like you know like emotional moment with Karas and Rita and when when by the time Karas actually reached Ishabana like she died on Rita's hand and, and she kind of like asked Rita hey do it you need to do it and then and then Rita is gonna have a kind of like a little bit of internal conflict between in, in herself like I I I, I I, I want to do it but Himeno asked me not to do it and, and all those stuff like that is gonna be amazing okay like if if the if that is how the story goes but with that being said I just wanna go on to the last part of the episode where we actually get to see Jeremy's uh, mother and I think like a lot of people on the internet seems to really really love her design and uh, like, like last thing for her or should I say I, I get the appeal like she's definitely you know like she have the curves at the right spot but i just want to remind all of you that is just costume okay that is just costume what are you guys doing like you horny bastard but then again with that being said me myself is also a horny bastard so i really really love the design of jeremy's mother as well so amazing thing okay hopefully i just i, I feel like she came out of nowhere and then maybe they just want to end the episode with a cliffhanger because they see how much of an impact it does in episode 28 and they want to continue to do that moving forward i don't know but you know like ending things with a cliffhanger is definitely what osama sentai is trying to do uh, in this past few episodes so Jeremy appearing is just to kind of let us know what is to come in the next episode so with that being said that is all from me hope you enjoy the video it is not very very long in compared to my other video but I still hope you enjoy it and if you made it this far into the video it means you enjoy it if you haven't subscribed I would strongly encourage you to, to do so to subscribe and maybe comment the word what comment the word milf in the comment section below and don't tell anyone don't explain don't even explain why Mio. just type it because of jeremy's mother bye goodbye that is all subscribe if you haven't bye